what I want to show you is how easy it is to make bread from your home, from your own kitchen, uh, by simple technique. I'm going to show you how to mix and work the dough my way. Not the way that you've probably been taught, the English way where you pummel the dough and you've got tons of flour everywhere to make it unstick. This way is just your ingredient from the recipe. There I've got one kilo of flour, my 700 gram of water, my yeast and my salt, and we're just going to work the dough, lift it off the board, make it come alive and unstick from the, from, from the board just by incorporating air into it and give it a lot of um, fluffiness and and a lot of live. And to do that, I got my flour working there. I put my fresh yeast into my flour and I'm going to crumble the yeast in my flour. And if it's fresh yeast, it will crumble very, very quickly and become tiny, tiny particles like that. And it just disappear all nicely. And you see, you can't see it anymore. And if you use dry yeast, I do the same as I do with fresh yeast, I just make it disappear into the flour. Um, I don't um, mix water uh, with yeast and a bit of sugar for, for the sake of it. You just cut, cut the middleman, go straight into it. Then I put my 20 gram of salt in there, blend it together. Make sure you don't mix your yeast and salt too close together. That's why I blend everything together there. Then it's ready to drive my water into it. Shall I just show you that I don't put any flour in my board. And you put your water into it. And I use my magic plastic scraper to help me to blend and mix all the ingredients together. I don't put my hand in there just right now, just in case it's a phone ring, you know. You blend everything until all your water has been absorbed by the flour. So you can see my hand still pretty clean at that spot. Tiny bit more water in there. Use a strong white flour to start with, it'll give you good result for your baking. So you can see everything's going up. A tiny drop, pick up the rest of the flour on the bottom. Weather the water because I find it more accurate and if you got a, a scale, uh, it's try, it, try to do it, you just get um, 700 milliliter of water and compare it with 700 gram of water uh, you always find a tiny difference uh, it's just more accurate way of um, weighing your water okay now i've got like a a thick sticky porridge in my bowl but everything's coming off the bowl that's ready to go onto the my bowl and just make sure you put any flour that you can see Just there we go. Okay, our first stage is done. Now we've got something that look very wet and sticky, and as you would probably would in your in your in a your own the, the, the British method of make, making bread, you put add flour now and really add more more flour than you need to into into the recipe, which is not part of the recipe. So what we try to do now is to make you have a lot of air going through so the, by doing that I'm going to do some very slow motion to start with you got your ingredient there you pick up your dough think of your hand as two fork going under your dough like pick it up pinch it there and snap it a little bit there then you stretch your dough up fold it over to trap some air inside every time you do that a lot of air get trapped into it and then you pick it up again 
slap it again, do it again, like that. Stretch it. Don't worry about stick it to your hand or anything, like it will come off as it goes. And keep it working out. And the softer your dough, the easier it is to work that method. You can hear all the air get trapped inside. And you do that until the dough will become smooth, come off your hand cleanly without any help of flour or oil or any other help. The only help you can have is, if you struggle a little bit, scrap the dough with your scraper, that's all. Right, I can put the second speed on now. So you slap it down. Don't try to go too fast, but just be um, consistent on your movement. I can feel the dough become more supple and start to get together and bounding and becoming alive. And very quickly you'll see it's coming off it's coming off the your working surface. See? And start to see the dough forming. At that, that stage, the dough is well worked. What you do then, tiny bit of flour, put your dough upside down like, like so, and then fold it onto itself a few times. And you end up with a nice, beautifully worked, light, Light dough, very responsive, supple. There's about 70% of water for, 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 for this recipe, which is much higher than you would do for probably British bread. If you can see the dough, just really, really alive. It's beautiful, and that won't let you down. It's more hairy, but by the way that we work the dough, trap air at every movement we're doing, we trap air inside. Uh, that's the key of that. And then I put it into the bowl to rest there. And this you can keep it now for an hour to rest. It will be absolutely perfect there. Okay, my dough has been resting now for an hour, um, a tiny bit more actually. What we're gonna do is turn the dough over on a very lightly floured surface. You can see, I don't pull the dough down like that because you're gonna this or the other structure. What I do again with my little scraper, I just help the dough to come down very gently. Let it slide down. And you can see all the beautiful strand of the dough. The smell is fantastic. Just all well, the fermentation starting to really, really get into your nose there. Make you drunk almost. So you have a nice piece of dough. What we're gonna do now, my next step is, before I divide the dough for whatever we go into the recipe, is to give it some strength just by um, a very simple folding technique before dividing. What I do then is, make sure I've got a bit of flour. So you got almost a square that you work with your hand. Just take the top there, fold it over there, press it gently with your finger over the 
back of your heel. Bring this in here, the so same in the center, and do it again, like so. This technique will be repeated throughout the book quite often. Uh, it, it's, it's the backbone of your, it's like seeing of the, the your, your back spine. That's where your strengths will be always. And if you do a French stick, if you do anything else, it's always on the center. And you fold it again like that. So there already, you got something much stronger, full of life and beautiful. And that's ready to be divided nice and neatly with your scraper again. Divide this for little scales in here. And if we do little <coughs> some French stick for example, just try to get nice and neatly, nice piece of dough like that. Divide it to 250, because I'm good. Like everything, if you just do it by hand, if you if you're used to it, you can judge, you know your piece of dough roughly all the same same size. If you're not used to it, you might have with a small one, a big one, and all single bed baking is being consistent always through what you're doing. Uh, your baking will be different if it's a big piece and a small piece. And just, you want everything to look, look a bit the same. pieces of dough nicely divided. So the next step again is to give a bit more strength into it. So you just give it a little pre-molding. Let me move that to show you what I mean. A tiny bit of flour. You don't want too much flour at all. Just a little bit. If you did mold for uh, a round shape or a bowl, what you need to do is to bring your dough into the center again. Same technique. So what I do is bring the dough and show it slowly, um, and there, and push it in, turn it over, do it there. You can see it start to shape there, and the strength, the backbone is there. Fold it in, in, in. And with practice, you'll become very quick. And it's there. And then you got your little boy, you just tuck it in like that. All nice. And you can just finish it off with your own. You see the rough bit there, that's your seam, what we call the seam. Just tuck it in, just beautifully like that. And that's all you need, and you got something nice and springy. A lot of strands. If we mold a French stick, for example, again, tiny bit of flour, not too much. What we do, again, same technique, try to start with a nice and even little square or rectangle, bring your dough the top over, fold it in, press it down like that, again with your finger or the back of your heel, and you see, again, you're giving strength just there. That will, be, that will become the top of your French stick underneath. Every time you press down, that's where it is. Then turn it over, this way down, and do it again on the middle, like so. Then you seal it like that. So you got the top of your your braid will be there, and the seam is there. And to get more lines, like for a French stick, for example, you start again with the seam on the top, press it down, and repeat the same operation by twisting the dough and folding the two edges together there. And you got this just there. What you just need now is just to finish it off, just give it a little roll. So you lift it up from the, the board, it's a bit sticky, just roll it to the final shape, like so, if you want to. Bit of flour, and you can see there the seam is there. So you're always in control. You know where 
every single year is there. And the top of your bed will be there. So when you put it to rest in your tea towel, you either put it down this way, but don't twist it or of any shape like that. Just keep it nice where everything is. If you did a loaf for a tin, fold it over, same as we did earlier. And again, and again, sit it there. And then you got your little loaf nice and strong on the top. And again, your seam is there. And now I'm going to show you um, uh, how to finish off your baguette and um, what we call the epi, little ears cut with a pair of scissors. Um, the bread now has been proved for um, about an hour, just on the, um, just on the double, double of volume, um, and it's ready to, to be done there. Um, a lot of my bread is rested or proved uh, on a pleated towel. Uh, this allows you to, to, to put them next to each other and keep them separated. What you don't want to is to put them together and then they're going to batch and it, it'd be very hard to separate them. First, I'm going to demonstrate to you the, the epi. Very gently. And don't be scared, the dough is strong, it won't deflate or anything like that. Okay, then you put it on the tray big enough to take it. Nice, make sure it doesn't stick. And then you give it nice cut like so. There, so you got nice ears, and that's beautiful bread to put on your table for lunch. Okay, for the French stick, you get your bait on top of a tray or wooden peel, like so. And then, like what we use in France, we use a, a razor blade, like so, and what we call a lamb. Uh, I got this one season 14. To do that, you just get your razor blade and slide the little handle into it, like so. And this will act as a, your pen. That's how you sign your bread in France in the bakery. Every baker will have a different way of cutting. And very often, um, uh, your, your boss in the bakery will know who's, who cut the bread just by the way it's been cut. Um, it's what we call the signature of the, of, um, of, uh, of the baker, la grigne. Okay, to do so, because it's very sharp, um, you've got to really be quick and uh, assertive when you do it. You don't drag um, yeah, the blade onto it. You go very fast at an angle, and that's will, that, that, that will help your bread to develop in the oven. When the gas expands inside the, your loaf, it will burst the, um, where, where the cuts are and just give you a nice crust on the top. She cut this way, like so, very gently. The next bread I'm going to show you is the fugas. The fugas is a, the one I teach you all my bread classes. It's the one who just put your smile on your face. It's um, very striking, good looking bread. Um, it doesn't involve any molding or shaping of, 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 of the salt. You just cut it with your, again, your friend's scraper and a bit of flour and just slide it in your oven on a hot stone and it just becomes beautiful leaf shaped bread. Um, to do so uh, very easily, flour your work surface quite heavily and again you can turn your dough over very very gentle on the top like so help your dough all the way down and we don't want to deflect to deflate the dough we want to keep it nice and lively that if you very gently flour the top also a little that. You see, it's all, all the bubble, the air bubbles come in there. It's beautiful though. And what you want to do for this bread, is just, I might bore there. Just get a piece of dough and be firm when you cut it, just in a rough triangle shape, like so. And then what you do, see there's no molding so far, with a, your edge of your scraper, just cut through there without going all the way to the edge. And then with the smallest side, just cut three nice diagonal cut, just like that. Make sure you've got plenty of flour. Then you just need to open it up a little bit like that. But as simple as that. 
and you will see after a bit of practice and a bit of uh, um, uh, self-belief also that you become a great baker and you can really get on with it and make some great bread at home. Mm. Delicious. Mm.